hello everyone and welcome to a new video so today we'll discuss the fundamental theorem of arithmetic all right so what does it state let's see that first and then we'll get to the proof of that okay so informally the fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that every integer which is greater than one can be expressed as product of primes it can be actually factorized as product of primes and that too uniquely that's what it says right so the existence of the factorization of a number which is greater than 1 to product of primes and the uniqueness of such a factorization is what the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says. Okay. So this is how formally we can state it. So every integer greater than 1 can be written in the form p1 raised to n1, p2 raised to n2 and so on, pk raised to nk where nas are at least 0 and the pas are distinct primes. All right. The so factorization is unique except possibly for the order of the factors. When we say the factorization is unique except possibly for the order of the factors, what does it mean by that? We will see using an example. Alright, so first let's see an example and then we will understand the statement itself. So let's consider the number 1200 as an example. It is greater than 1 and now it can be expressed as product of primes and it can be expressed as 2 raised to 4 into 3 raised to 1 into 5 square. Right? So the uh, existence part of the prime factorization comes here. I mean, it can be expressed as product of primes. That is one aspect of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And the fundamental theorem of arithmetic also says of the uniqueness of the prime factorization. What it means is that no matter what, there will be always four twos and one three and two five in this factorization. You can change the order. For example, you can write it as three raised to one into two raised to four into five raised to two. Or you can write it as 5 raised to 2 into 2 raised to 4 into 3 raised to 1. So the order doesn't matter. There will be always 4 2s, 1 3 and 2 5. That's where the uniqueness part comes. Okay. So the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that every number greater than 1 can be expressed as a product of primes. Right. Every number greater than 1 can be expressed as product of primes. And it can be expressed uniquely. This is what by unique it means. Okay. Okay. Now let's prove the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So let's prove the existence part which says that every integer greater than 1 can be prime factorized. Meaning that every integer greater than 1 can be written as product of prime numbers. I mean every integer greater than 1 is either a prime number or can be written as product of prime numbers. Okay. So, so let's start with the number 2. 2 is the first number which is integer which is greater than 1. Right. So 2 is a prime number. So our statement is valid for number 2 so for n equal to 2 which is a base case it holds the statement holds okay so what we will do is we will assume now suppose that n is greater than 2 okay so we will assume that the statement holds true for all the integers which are less than n okay and now let's consider the number n n is actually if it, if n is a prime number right then we are done actually because if n is prime number then th that's what the statement says a any number greater than 1 is either a prime number or can be written as product of primes so if n is prime then we are done now if n is not prime that means n is composite number right so if n is a composite number which means that it has a factor other than 1 and n right so we can write n equal to a b basically where a b and uh, a and b are numbers which are in between 1 and n okay so now n equal to a b and a and b can be either prime or composite again okay uh, so now if a and b are both primes then again we are done but a and b the fact we should observe here that is a and b are numbers which are less than n and by induction we have assumed that for all the numbers less than n the statement holds true so a and b can be actually prime factorized a and b can be written as product of primes or a and b can be prime so the statement holds true for a and b so because a n equal to a b n equal to the product of a and b we have the prime factorization for n okay that's how we prove the existence part every number greater than n every integer greater than n is either a prime number or can be written as product of primes and the existence part we proved using strong induction now let's get into the uniqueness part in the uniqueness part we say that there is a unique prime factorization for every number. Okay, to prove the uniqueness part here, we will use a lemma, which is Euclid's lemma. What Euclid's lemma says is that 
if a prime number p divides the product ab of two integers a and b then the prime number p must divide at least one of those integers a or b that means if actually p divides where p is a prime number p divides the two uh, product of two integers a and b if p divides a b all right then p divides at least one of those integers if p then p divides at least a or p divides b okay so if p divides a b then it is the case that either p divides a or p divides b or p divides both all right that is what the euclid's lemma says okay we will not see the proof of euclid's lemma in this video we will have a separate video proving the euclid's lemma all right now we will assume the euclid's lemma here and we will get into the proof here so now we will see a proof by contradiction all right so let's say uh, instead of having a unique prime factorization for an, an integer which is greater than 1 let's say it is possible that there are two distinct prime factorizations okay let's say that is possible if if a number n has two distinct prime factorization it will look like this right so n can be written as a product of pi's as well as product of qi's where both pi's and qi's are prime numbers okay so these are both distinct prime factorizations okay and now n let n be the least integer that has two distinct prime factorizations okay okay now in that case this because both of the prime factorizations when it when we product them we will get n they are both are equal basically so p1 raised to n1 into p2 raised to n2 and so on pk raised to nk is same as q1 raised to m1 into q2 raised to m2 and so on till qj raised to mj okay that's clear right so let's consider the expanded equation actually uh, instead of writing p1 raised to n1 i write p1 n n1 times okay and then p2 n2 times and so on so it's the same equation basically uh, i write it like this now according to euclid's lemma p1 is a which is a prime number right p1 divides p1 actually divides uh, the rhs so p1 divides q1 raised to m1 into q2 raised to m2 and so on all right that is a true that is true actually okay that's a fact and now according to euclid's lemma we have seen that when a prime number p divides a product of two integers let's say then it the uh, prime number divides at least one of the integer right so here actually according to euclid's lemma we can say that p1 divides some of some qi here uh, okay so and without loss of generality let that qi be q1 okay it, it will work for any of them but we, we can assume that it's q1 so p1 divides q1 okay and when p1 divides q1 you have to uh, see the fact that both p1 and q1 are primes so one can so p1 cannot divide q1 unless they are equal so p1 has to be equal to q1 because both of them are prime numbers all right so from the we made made use of the euclid lemma here and got that p1 should be equal to q1 all right now since p1 is equal to q1 we can cut off p1 and q1 from the equation 1 okay the equation we can cut off the p1 and q1 from both lhs and rhs then the equation becomes like this one p1 is removed from lhs and one q1 is removed from rhs right now we have these two distinct prime factorizations of some integer which is strictly lesser than n which contradicts the fact that n was the least integer that has two distinct prime factorizations right so there goes the contradiction so our assumption was actually false okay and every integer which is greater than 1 has a unique prime factorization if that number is composite okay so we use we proved using a proof by contradiction and we made use of the euclid's lemma here to prove the uniqueness part of the prime factorization theorem or the fundamental theorem of arithmetic all right so i hope it is clear if you have any doubts uh, please comment in the comment section below okay thank you we'll see in the next video